In the dermis layer, we have other structures. One is called the mesonar copsal, and the second one is called the proscenial copsal. Both of them are sensor. The mesonar copsal is sense touch, so it's on the more closer to the surface layer. And that's the mesonar capsule, it sense the touch. When I touch your skin, you can feel it. That's because of this. Proscenial copsal uh, has those very unique ring structure. Proscenium capsule is function is sense pressure, so it's much deeper. Sometimes you found in some model is very close to the hypodermis layer, uh, but it's, it's technically it's in the dermis layer. It's in the very deep. So when I touch your skin, first is the touch sensation, and yet if I keep pushing in, you feel the pressure. So proscenium capsule capsule is the is the pressure sensor. It's much deeper than this one. This is also bigger than than the mesonar capsule. Now we go to this layer, it's called the subcutaneous layer, also called the hypodermis. Uh, I've student like hypodermis because they say epidermis, burnt dermis, hypodermis. But I also have student like the subq, uh, because the subq needle uh, go to this layer. So that's the layer with a lot of fat, adipose. So some animals, they can uh, have no more activity in the winter because in this, they have a lot of fat in this tissue, in, in this layer. Their function anchoring stabilize skin, protect, insulate. So that's the, the fat function. Your skin tone is designed by the skin pigments. And albino, they have no pigments at all. And actually it's very dangerous because the UV can directly go into their body and damage their, their cells, not just skin cells, damage their skin cell, damage their cell. So uh, they have to wear uh, long sleeves in the summer. Uh, because they have no protection. And these pigments come from three. You have three different kinds of pigments. The main one, melanin. So melanin design your pigments. And we have different kinds of skin tone, but it's actually just how much melanin you have. And you can induce, you can induce it by UV. So that's when you go to the beach, and when you come back, and all your friends know, oh, you went to the beach, and because they can be induced by UV. The second one is carotene. Uh, carotene is, is the, the pigment you can find in your food, and carrot has a lot of it. Also, sweet potato have it. Usually, it won't affect your skin tone too much unless you, you overconsumption. Uh, we do have kids, they, they eat nothing but uh, carrot for two months, and it turns out it will affect the skin tone. The third one is uh, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the pigment you have in your blood, and its color is, is red. So um, that's, sometimes you find some kids after the exercise, their, their cheek turn pink, and that's because of the hemoglobin. So three pigments. So there's three. And I explain their function. Let's look at some uh, skin appendage. So we'll talk about all this structure, and in the lab, you need to be able to identify uh, the, this structure. Okay, first one, hair. So that's the hair. And the hair have the uh, hair shed, hair root. Uh, let's focus on the difference between the hair and hair follicle. So if you pull your hair out, you found, okay, you have a hair, but outside you have those white ball, and the white ball is not hair, it's hair follicle. So hair follicle are those supporting structure, that's the hair follicle. If you look at the size, that's the size, and histology, this is the hair, and you found these are the hair follicle. So hair follicle are usually the lighter compared with the hair. Hair is much darker, so hair follicle are the supporting structure. So in the lab, if I point at this, I ask you, what's this structure? The answer is not hair, it's a hair follicle. There's a hair follicle. So there's the hair. Uh, next one, sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland is the oil gland. So this is sebaceous gland. It produces oil, uh, lubricate the hair. And some animals, they are able to dive into the sea and catch the fish and come out. Their hair is still dry, and that's because they have a very well-developed sebaceous gland. 
So in human, uh, its function is uh, lubricate. So if you don't wash your hair for one week, it smells badly because because of this gland. So that's the sebaceous gland. How to identify it? In the lab, you also need to identify it, the sebaceous gland. It's the oil gland. So the oil, they have a lot of bubble. And I told you the reason in the connected tissue. Because when they prepare the size, they have to use the dye to dye to create the color. And then they, they use alcohol to wash out the, the dye. And alcohol wash out the, the oil, so they're going to leave a lot of bubble. And the sebaceous gland always stay next to the hair because their function is to lubricate the hair. So first, if I give you these slides, you identify, okay, that's the hair. And this is structure next to the hair, and they look like oil, so it must be the sebaceous gland. That's how I identify this structure. So that's the hair, that's the hair, and you found this the hair follicle, right? It's much lighter compared with the hair. And that's the sebaceous gland. That's a pretty small one. You can find some bigger one. And let's look at the next one called erector pili muscle. It's a muscle. Uh, this one is pretty small. Let's go back to look at the slides. Look at the pili muscle. Okay, the pili muscle look like this. P-I-L-I. And the PI muscle, its function is when it contract, it makes the hair stand out. In some animals, they use the PI muscle make the hair stand out for communication. Like during the mating season, you found some birds that will make the hair stand out. Or uh, they, they fight, or they show, that's because of this. In human, we, we gradually lose the function because uh, we, don't, we don't use this to make our hair stand out, to ask the enemy go away. Uh, we, we communicate. So, but we still have this. That's when you have the goose bump. So when this muscle contract, the pili muscle contract, the hair stand out. That's what happened in human. So that's the pili muscle, erector pili muscle. So it's a muscle. Okay, next one, sweat gland. And we actually have two kind of sweat gland. The pseudoreferous gland, sweat gland. The first one is called the echare, sweat gland. That's uh, when you have it when you were a baby. So you have three to four millions of it. You have a lot of them. And their function is produce sweat. So they, they, uh, they regulate your body temperature because when the sweat evaporate and your body temperature drop. So in the summer you sweat a lot. And it's a exocrine gland so you have a body part and their tube go out. So that's the occurrence sweat gland. And this is a very good picture. So you find the whole gland go to here. There's a sweat gland, occurrence sweat gland. Uh, there's the hair and there's the hair follicle. And what's this? So you see a lot of bubble? Yeah, these are the spacious gland. So these are the spacious gland. Oh, they're always, always next to the hair. And the next one is pseudoferous gland, sweat gland, apocrine sweat gland. Apocrine is bigger. And this gland mature during puberty. So sex hormone trigger them mature. And they're not everywhere. You found them in some area like the armpit axillary, uh, some uh, genital area. This, uh, they, they are, I call the funky gland because they not just produce sweat. The echocrine sweat gland uh, produce sweat, and the apocrine one produce sweat and also lipid and protein. So when they go to the surface, the the material they produce, they go to the surface. Uh, at first, it's odorless, but you have a lot of bacteria living with you on the skin. So when they see this, they say, "Okay, buffet." They start to eat. So after you exercise, if you don't take a shower, about thirty minutes to one hour. Uh, you smell badly, and that's because of this gland. Okay, two more. Uh, we have the memory gland, and that's a specialized sweat gland. It produces not sweat, it produces milk. Put this milk. And 
and the last one this is one uh, it produces the ceramin. Ceramin is your ear wax. So that's the ear wax gland. Okay, that's it.